I've made millions of dollars from my music over the years, but I've also invested millions of dollars marketing and promoting my music. So I've compiled the seven best purchases an artist can make to grow their music career this year. So let's jump into it. Now the information I'm about to drop, you're not gonna find on other vanilla YouTube channels. This is from battle tested 22 years in the music industry that if you apply them can change your life. Number one is attending live events and investing in your education because your education is the one thing they can't take away from you. The government can't tax it, no, a thief can't come in and steal it, and a divorce can't take it away from you. And you can pass it on to your children's children. You have that education and those skills for life. But I'm not just talking about any education. I'm talking about going to live events where you not only learn stuff, but you meet people. The second best investment you can make is buying onto a tour. Not only do you get to see the world, not only do you get to play live shows, but you get to be in front of a bigger fan base. This is probably the best investment I've ever made. I remember when we'd play 10 shows and we'd be in front of maybe a thousand people. I bought onto one show and I was in front of a thousand people in one night. Not only was I in front of new fans, but I also met producers on the road. I made more relationships with other artists and musicians. That's where I met managers, booking agents, radio, and then I was able to go back and tour these places as a headlining act and make even more money. Buying on a tour is the fast track to growing your fan base as opposed to you grinding it out on a road. But you might be asking, how do I buy onto a tour? Now this video, I can't explain fully on, on how to buy onto tour. I have other videos that talk about that, but you wanna reach out to an artist, make a list of all the artists that you wanna tour with, and then hit them up, build the relationship directly, or contact their booking agent contact the manager and say, hey, do you guys have any opening slots? I've got a budget. I'm really easy to work with. Best investment you'll ever make. Number three, and this is one of my favorites, is buying an investment property, okay? So you either buy a property that you live in and you rent it out, or you buy a duplex and you live in one side and then you rent the other side out, and the money that you get from that pays the property down, it pays your mortgage, and if there's any left over, that's the cash flow that comes in. My guitarist, when he would come out of the road, he would live, live in his house when he's there, but when he's out on the road, he would Airbnb it. So he'd be making money off of his house. If me and my wife had done this when we first started touring, we just Airbnb'd our two rooms or whatever, we would have been making money and it would have been paying our mortgage down while we're on the road making money. So we're making multiple streams of income. Plus, now you have a real tangible asset that you can borrow money from. Plus, over the years, real estate tends to appreciate. This is an asset. You can write off your mortgage um, as studio expenses because you probably have your studio, your office, talk to your accountant. But this becomes a real asset that you can leverage and also grow your net worth and pull money from when you need it to reinvest in your music business. Number four, and I have to get out of the car because this one makes me just so furious. You don't need an expensive microphone. All you need is like a Shure SMB7 V55, whatever that cheap $400 microphone is. You don't need that, you know, a Newman or that $10,000 mic. And just get like a Focusrite um, sound card, something simple. Um, we recorded my song Save You on this Shure SMB7, and uh, we got 3 million plus streams on this song. It doesn't have to be a Newman or something super, super expensive, just something that can get good vocals. It's all about the post production. But spend a few hundred dollars on a decent microphone phone, a good sound card, and have your studio set up. But don't go wasting your money on thousands and thousands of dollars on a sound card and, and microphone. Instead, invest that into number five. And number five, of course, is one of the, my favorite, most important investments ever that has made me millions of dollars in my course of my music career, and that is a producer. Not an engineer that is just going to hit record and you do your thing in the booth, but someone who is gonna challenge you to write better songs, 
rewrite the lyrics, rewrite the melodies, come up with really good music for it, mix the song, and make a real production out of your song so it sounds like a record. You find producers by hopping on Spotify and listening to songs that you like. Click on those three buttons to say, hey, who produced the song, and reach out to them. My big point here is though, don't go work with someone that doesn't have a track record. Don't go and sign up for 10 songs before you've first done one song. You want to date a producer before you get married. And sometimes a producer is like, well, let's just do 10 songs. Let's do five. No, do one. Do one. That way they have to do a really good job. You pay them 50% up front and then 50% up uh, at the end. But that is the best investment you can make when it's a good producer, an A-level producer, someone who's got a track record. This isn't where you cheap out because you're investing in you. You're investing in your songs. And so you want the best song, the best mix, the best songwriting, the best performance that can be pulled out of you. And that's a producer that is going to challenge you and take your career to the next level. Number six, and this allows me to make these videos right now for you to free up my time, and that is advertising and marketing. Right now, as I'm watching this video, there's a Facebook and Instagram ad promoting my music. It's promoting a song, selling my CDs, and I'm not there. I've partnered with Zuckerberg to get my music out to the right people. I get compared to Linkin Park, Papa Roach, Breaking Benjamin, all these is rock acts, right? Well, I target them with Facebook and Instagram ads you know, promoting my music. And so that it's giving me thousands and thousands of impressions and it's happening 24 seven. I used to just walk up to people after the shows to try and sell CDs. Yes, I love touring. I love buying onto tours when I'm in front of lots of people, but I can only be at one place at one time. But right now, as I'm talking to you on this video, not only am I leveraging YouTube and you guys are watching this all over the world, but there's Facebook and Instagram ads also going right now. So I'm like cloning myself in multiple places and you want to get more done. Well, then you've got to stop trading your time for dollars. You invest your money in to get the marketing and get those eyeballs on your music while you're sleeping. I always tell my students, you are in the right place business. You are in the music business. You've created a product, right? And so your product can be in a million different places at once. Once you've made it, you've uploaded it online. It takes just as much time to sell one as it does a million. But with touring, right? And traveling and trading my time for dollars, I can only do the service when I'm there. I can only play one show at a time. You know, if I sew jackets together and made jackets or custom shoes, I can only paint one shoe at a time or make one jacket at a time but when I create a product a digital product like a song well it's everywhere you know you got to stop thinking local and start thinking global and but what are you going to do to market that music well you set up some Facebook and Instagram ads and we got some videos below this description for that for setting up your ads last but not least and this is the biggest game changer Steve Jobs taught me this one and it's this if your dream does not require a team, you're not thinking big enough. And I wanna ask you this question, how much do you place on your dollar per hour? How much do you charge per hour? Are you worth $20 an hour? Are you worth $40 an hour, $50 an hour? Have you put a price on your time? Let's just say you say you're worth $50 an hour and I want you to post below how much you, you charge per hour. If you charge $40 or $50 an hour, then why are you still doing $5 an hour tasks? Why have you not delegated that with a virtual assistant? We call them VAs. I learned about this in the four hour work week. But you shouldn't be doing minimum wage activities if you're a $20, $40, $50, or $100 per hour person, right? You need to delegate that. So you hop on Fiverr, you hop on Upwork, you hop up on one of these virtual assistant sites and you hire somebody out to do those tasks that you want, don't want to do. I don't want to look up Spotify indie playlists. I don't want to look up booking agent contacts. I don't want to look up all these different things. So I hire a VA, which stands for virtual assistant, to go do a $5 an hour task so that it frees me up to do the most important stuff and frees you up to do the most important stuff, right? Like songwriting, maybe producing, playing a live show, only doing things you can do and then delegate those things that you don't wanna do. That's what you do to find freedom. You buy back your time and delegate the other stuff. 
I want you to post below this video which purchase you're gonna make this year that you feel is gonna be the biggest game changer. Make sure you watch this video on how to set up Spotify ads to promote your music 24 seven so that you can free up your time and do your most important tasks. Don't forget to hit like, comment, share this up, and hit subscribe. Peace.